Hey guys, what's up? I am back in the shop, and uh, it's time for part two of the bumper build video, where I'm going to tackle what is probably the coolest part, the swing out. So the whole reason for building this swing out is so that I can get my spare tire off of my roof rack and uh, shrink the height of the truck a little bit so I'm not taking out branches on literally every single trail I go on. And if you guys don't know this already, I run 35 inch tires on my truck and it's a full size 35 inch spare on a steel wheel. So there's a lot of weight there. Everything about this swing out had to be really beefy and I'd be able to handle that weight both statically and through a lot of dynamic loading if I'm bouncing the truck off rocks and trees and whatever else. Also, I don't just want to carry a tire on the swing out. I want to be able to carry a couple accessories like you know recovery gear or fuel or CO2 or whatever else. So uh, the strength requirements for this swing out are pretty high. And because I need so much strength out of the swing out, it's designed and will be built almost entirely out of 2x2 two two box tube with 3 16 wall. And that's really rugged stuff. You should be able to handle uh, all that weight no problem. I also need a really beefy hinge and latch hardware. So as I mentioned in my first video, I'm going with a company called 4X Innovations. They make what is absolutely the most rugged hinge on the market. It's supported on both sides. It's got dual bearing. It's, it's a really beefy piece. You'll see here in a little bit. And the latch is also really rugged. It's just, you know, quarter inch plate with a solid steel rod welded to it. It's, you can't get any stronger. It's great. If you guys want a little design refresher of the swing out and bumper, definitely check out part one of the series because I go over the CAD model of this entire assembly and you guys can see how it's gonna look before I'm even done. So, I don't wanna talk anymore because there's a ton of fabrication in this video. There is cutting and welding and grinding and millwork and I don't know, pretty much anything you could want or what I would want in a fabrication video, I think I've got it. So, uh, let's cut it off here and get after it. So the first thing I did was to cut all the different length pieces of 2x2 box tube on the bandsaw, and then to notch them at the correct angles, I used this crude method of paper templates and an angle grinder. Uh, and even though it's crude, it worked really well. I was actually within a couple degrees all across for all the pieces, and it fit up really nicely. And here are all the pieces laid out. I just started with the big center upright piece, um, and I made sure that's square with just a 90 degree magnet, which are super handy in an application like this. I just tacked that on there at the correct position, and that made it easy to line up all the other pieces in their locations. And as I'm going along here, setting things down, I'm always referring back to the drawing to make sure all my dimensions are one for one and what I expect them to be in real life. And then uh, once I'm happy, I just started tacking things up. And I use a lot of tack welds here because I did not want this thing breaking apart as I'm flipping it over and welding at different angles. And I'm definitely not showing all the tack welds I actually put there. Uh, just, you know, a significant number of them. But you get the idea. I used a lot of tack welds on this build because I really didn't want to have to do this twice. Moving on to the hinge side of the swing out, I started with the upright piece once again because I can use that 90 degree magnet to make sure it's nice and square and right at the end of the swing out and tack that on so I have a great starting point. And then I did the same thing with the large horizontal piece. I aligned that with the top of the diagonal piece on the other side of the upright, tacked it on, and that made it really easy to fit up that little diagonal piece uh, in the corner. And everything was square and nice and all at the perfect angles. And after all that tacking together, it was finally time to run some finish beads, so I got the MIG machine dialed in. I don't remember the exact settings, but I'm definitely running the machine pretty hot just to be on the safe side. And I went one by one and just filled these seams where the box tubes meet and put this thing together. I'm definitely not showing all the welds because there are quite a few of them, but you get the idea. I kind of use just a zigzag pattern and get a nice fill on each piece. Then moving on to the spare tire mounting plate, I bought this plate from a company called Barnes Four Wheel Drive. They make a nice multi-pattern spare tire mounting plate that you see here. And I machined a little pocket in the back of it so that my two by two box tube would sit really nicely exactly where I wanted it. So I just laid that tube in there, put down a few tacks and then finish welded it and it ended up being perfect. Then I threw the whole assembly onto the swing out and tacked it right at the top of the upright and finish welded it. 
And to strengthen that horizontal piece, I'm using a couple different methods. I'm using a long quarter inch piece of plate that will both cap the upright tube and add stiffness to that upper box tube wall. And then I'm putting gussets on both sides of the horizontal piece as well, interfacing with both the spare tire mounting plate and with the upright tube. And this will allow it to resist any of that dynamic force that the really heavy spare tire will impart on it. And then to mount the spare tire itself, I'm using just some hex bolts that I got off McMaster. They are M12, and I stripped all the zinc coating off of each one of them, and then I'm just welding the head to the back side of the spare tire mounting plate. And that way, I'll just have a nice usable stud on the other side that I can just bolt the tire to. To be able to test fit the swing out on the bumper, I needed the latch plate installed on the end of the swing out, but I didn't want it permanently on there, so I just threw a couple tacks on in case I needed to move it. And then, after all that work on the swing out itself, it was time to build the bumper end caps that hold the 4X Innovation hinge and latch. This one is the hinge side, and I cut out all these pieces individually and uh, milled them all so they're very precise. And I'm fitting them up with a 90 degree magnet, throwing some tacks on. And I was really happy how easily these things assembled. Uh, that was my whole design intent was to just make them simple to build, yet somewhat interesting looking and very strong. I didn't want to have to use any sort of CNC machining. I wanted to be able to cut them out with just simple tools, fit them all up with just a magnet and a clamp, tack them all together, yet have it provide a lot of strength at the very end and look pretty good too and uh, I think I did that so I'm just here I'm finishing up the tacking and then we will finish weld After I was done with the hinge side end cap, I moved over to the latch side end cap. And the neat design feature about this end cap it is, is that it allows the swing out to latch internally to this end cap. It uh, nests within it. And so I need to create this little clearance notch on the mill so that the end of the swing out can swing into this end cap and latch internally. And then I'm cutting the angled shape on the bottom of the end cap with an angle grinder. And you guys might think, hey, this isn't a super clean way to do it, and you're right. However, um, when you take it to a belt sander, it actually looks pretty good. And I was able to kind of match sand both sides, so it's very uh, symmetric. And here I'm just tacking it all up, once again, using the 90 degree magnet, the handy dandy welding tool. And then I'm going to run some finish beads. When I was running these finish welds, I ended up pulling both of the uh, vertical legs here out of parallel a little bit. They just squeaked in due to the heat input. Uh, it was pretty expected, uh, just due to the cantilevered nature of each of the legs. But it wasn't a big deal because I was going to box this end cap in anyway. So I'm using a piece of plate here that I was going to use to box the end cap. And I put a little chamfer in each of the bottom corners so it acts as a wedge. And as I hammer it in there, it pushed both those vertical legs back into parallel or extremely close to it. Uh, way close enough for the naked eye. And so I just tacked it in there after I wedged it in and ran some finish welds. And everything at the end was really close to perfect. All the angles were just about 90 degrees. And I was happy. And then I put another little piece of plate on the top as well just to finish the boxing. Ran some finish welds on that as well. And then by the time I ground it all down to the flap wheel, everything was looking really, really good. The next little piece to build is the interface bracket for the swing out to the hinge. And so I have all these pieces pre-cut and I wanted to build this little assembly as precisely as I reasonably could because it will determine a lot about how the swing out behaves when it's all assembled. It'll determine you know, the swing arc and if it lines up with the latch and I, I really wanted to get it right. So I measured it out, spent a lot of time doing that. 
and then tacked it all up. So here I've got this little U bracket where the barrel of the hinge fits right in the middle. Spent even more time measuring, making sure that hinge is really centered. And then tack that up as well. Definitely not finished welding yet because I wanted to do a full assembly test fit before I lay any sort of heavy bead on here. And then I wanted to leave in this little clip because I'm a total moron. I put this end cap on, kind of laid it on here. I'm like, why is this tilted? Why is it crooked? What did I do? Did I screw something up? And then I realized it's rotated 90 degrees. So I just spun it and it all fit perfectly and, you know, big sigh of relief and, you know, stupid moment. So I threw a magnet on there, tack welded the hinge to the end cap, and we're just about ready for the first test fit of the swing out onto the bumper body itself. And that's pretty exciting. I was really psyched. I'll just throw both the end caps on and then fit the swing out in the middle of that little U-bracket I just built. The 4X Innovations latch comes with standard zinc plated hex head hardware and I actually replaced it with a shoulder bolt just because I didn't want to rotate the latch on the threads of a hex head bolt every single time. The shoulder bolt has a smooth shaft through the latch itself and I think it's a little bit better than the stock hardware. So I just threw that on there and then I'm putting the latch end cap on. Notice I don't have the pin in it yet, I really wanted to precisely locate that pin and I didn't think I could do it I, I there are too many variables to do it in advance so I just uh, wanted to assemble everything and then place the pin uh, more precisely as I saw it all assembled and I also didn't drill the holes in the swing out uh, I match drilled these holes I basically tacked on the swing out to the U bracket just to hold it in place and then I match drilled these holes with the bracket holes just so I could position everything in advance and get everything really nicely lined up and not have to build too much slop into the system. And then here is the first swing of the swing out. Worked really well and I cut those little tack welds off of the U-bracket and it was time to finish weld. It was also time to finish weld this little piece of the latch on the end of the swing out. So I ran those beads and then I assembled the hinge once again. And don't worry guys, I'm not going to show you every single time I took this bumper apart and put it back together, but it ended up being quite a few times. It got pretty arduous and I got a workout in. But got the swing out back on there, I'm putting the three quarter inch bolts back through and I'm fitting it all up in its final position because it's time to locate the latch pin for the latch side end cap. I needed it a little shorter than stock, so I threw it on the bandsaw, cut a little chunk out of it, and it was the perfect length to tap into the latch side end cap with a hammer, just so it would stay in the position I put it in while I tack weld it. Just took a few taps, got it exactly where I wanted it, and then I tacked it up and made sure that everything was perfectly parallel and aligned in the swing out was parallel with the face of the bumper and everything looked really good. And once I was happy, I ran some finish beads and that pin was in there permanently. Then I installed the bumper plate. And so this little plate has two threaded bumpers that screw right into it. And its purpose is so that I can apply a little bit of preload to the swing out and it'll hopefully reduce it rattling around. Um, I can adjust how far those bumpers stick out with some washers and apply a little more or less preload and hopefully keep things quiet. So I just threw you know, a finish weld on each side and called it good. And it was at this point when everything was pretty much done that I thought, hey, you know what would be great? A last minute design change. I originally designed this bumper to be just a bit narrower than the rear of my truck and after thinking about it a little more at the very end, uh, I thought, 
I actually want this thing to be a little bit wider than the rear of my truck. So I devised a plan pretty quickly to add some extension plates to each of the end caps, weld them on, blend them in, and I figured it'll look pretty good and like I hadn't had this little change of heart at all. And I also boxed them in so that they're very strong. I actually do this a lot more than I'd care to admit. I have this last minute change of heart or change of method or design change to projects that I've been thinking about sometimes for months. And it's always annoying because you get this delay at the very end and you second guess yourself. But I tend to just dive right in and do it. I come up with a plan, I implement the plan, and uh, I get it done. And I would recommend anybody trying something similar to do exactly the same thing. If you have a last minute design change that you want to implement come up with a plan for sure but don't be afraid and don't be disheartened because you're the one who has to live with it at the end of the day and so make it how you want it even if it's a little different than you originally planned I'm just finishing up with the flap wheel here and I was super happy with the outcome it all blended together really really nicely and I could barely see the welds um, it really just turned out as nicely as I think it could have and I, I was really happy I made the change. I think the bumper looks better, just a little bit wider, and I think it gives a little bit more protection to the rear of the truck. So just a, a good decision overall. And here are the end caps, and I'm all done. And here it is, guys, the swing out bumper fully assembled. I am really, really happy with how it turned out. The last thing to do is put it on the truck. I cannot wait to get this thing on my rig. Feel free to comment with any questions you might have about the bumper or my build process. I'd be happy to answer them. And don't forget to subscribe because part three is coming up soon. I'm going to mount this thing up and throw a 35-inch spare on it. Get psyched for that, guys. I'll see you later.